Dr. Richard Carrier, again, pleasure to have you here at the uh, Castle of Myth Vision <laughs> in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, JD, one of my patrons, uh, has a question, and the question goes as such. Paul mentioned visiting a church where they call themselves Christians, but they knew nothing of a Jesus Christ. How many instances of Jesusless Christians do we know of? How widespread was that? How would that affect their readiness to accept a gospel? I don't know what passage he's referring to, so I would need a passage reference. Uh, so I don't know what that's a reference to, actually. Um, you want to try to can... figure it out? Yeah. Oops, I forgot that that's attached. <laughs> Here, it's okay. It's not going to mess up. There you go. All right, normally I had my phone next to me, but I didn't this night. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, let's see what we can find. I just Googled Paul's church without Jesus just to see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't in Paul in any case. It might be in Acts. Oh, okay, that might make sense. And when they're like, we have John's baptism, but we don't, oh, maybe, I don't know. Wait, I have to find my search screen. Where's the search in this? I don't even think Paul uses the term Christian. No, that's why I'm saying it doesn't exist in Paul. Um, but to couple that with maybe them not following Christ, I know that there's the accusation of like, yeah, the, I am the of Paul, I am of Paul, I am The of word Christ. Christian only exists in First Peter and in the book of Acts. Which are late in the game. Yeah, um, so it can't be that. Um, maybe they're referring to something else. Different Jesuses, so like in, in Galatians... Paul does talk about Christians who are following a different Jesus, and he's, he's saying you should you know, exile them and stay away from them and call them anathema or whatever, but he doesn't explain what he means. Like, right. like what other Jesus? Why, why call them anathema? Like, what's the deal? Paul is vague about that, but that's because he's writing to people who already know what he's talking about, you know, so we're, we're missing the context there. Um, but yeah, there, there, there isn't any case. Paul never mentions the word Christian. It doesn't exist. Um, and I don't think he ever mentions uh, visiting a church uh, without a Jesus. I don't think that's the case either. So yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, the closest that came to my mind, and I couldn't find anything, was um, I am of Paul. I am of Apollo. I am of Christ. Yeah. And it's like, hold on, dude. Like, what? Uh, is, what do you make of that weird? Yeah. Well, that's he's talking about. He's trying to oppose factionalism. So there's clearly groups, uh, I think this is in 1 Corinthians, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, where he's clearly dealing with, there are these arguments where people are saying, well, I agree with Peter, and, uh, and you know, so it's kind of like you're talking about the factionalism in, 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 on the internet now. Yeah. No, it's exactly like that. It's like, like oh, no, 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 let's, let's not be factionalists. Let's all just all get along, basically, is Paul's yeah. tie take. And what he is saying is like, like, all these guys have slightly different teachings, and then they have arguments with each other. And so people start taking sides in those arguments, and this creates factionalism and, dis and disputes and problems in the church, right? Uh, so Paul's trying to like smooth that out by saying, no, 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 let's just put Christ first and not pick individuals, right? So that, that's, that's <laughs> Paul's take on it. Uh, but no, there's another passage where Paul talks about, no, uh, where in the book of Acts, uh, where I think it's Paul runs into someone who's teaching something about like teaching something about Christianity without baptism, I think is what it is. Yeah. Or um, they only had John's baptism, I think. Or something like that. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. You're right. I'm, Some I'm, weird stuff. There's baptism of fire. There's right. Baptism but of this is, this is, it, there is something in the book of Acts where like they run into someone who's preaching a different kind of Jesus. And then there's like, somehow they're like missing some key piece of information. It's important to note that the author of Acts has put that in there on purpose. Like Acts, the author of Acts doesn't do anything by random chance. Like everything is propagandistic. It serves some function. And so I think what he's doing there is he's saying, yeah, if you run into like other people who are preaching different versions of Christianity, uh, straighten them out, please. Like that, that's basically the message. And he's uh, telling a heroic story about how that happens, right? Um, so I think that's what's going on. It doesn't necessarily refer to any actual specific instance of this. But it clearly was going on as a general phenomenon because we know in Galatians, Paul talks about like there are these other Jesus cults that he has a beef with and, yeah. and is telling people to, to ignore. And it's clearly not the Jesus cult that Peter and James and John are associated with because Paul has the opposite attitude to them is that he wants to cozy up to them and get their endorsement. So there's yet more Jesus cults than those <laughs> uh, that, that we don't know anything about because Paul doesn't tell us anything about them. 
the, you know, one thing, just going back to that, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Christ. Mm -hmm. I think this is a self-admission that I think fundamentalists miss. And I'll, I'll spell it out so you, you can like elaborate mm -hmm. a little on this and why I think this is significant. Paul, if you, if you want to say there's an earlier Christ teaching before Paul, let's say celestial model, right? Or if you take the, the idea I take that there was some guy and even Paul doesn't agree with him at the right. end of the day. <laughs> like he's already self-confessing, you know, Apollo's got some different teachings. You know, even Christ had some different teachings. Mm -hmm. I have different teachings. Let's just try to unite on this as yeah. one body. That's for a fundamentalist. If they found out that Paul, if they believe Paul's like really an apostle, yeah. which he over and over has to contend, that's quite obvious yeah, yeah, an issue. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, you know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. He has to like, argue for it. Right. Yeah. Like he doesn't agree with, apollos and everything he doesn't agree with christ on everything if there was an original teaching of and paul isn't the first guy he's like a johnny come lately right. so yeah, yeah. If, if peter is really saying this is what christ taught using the celestial model either way paul does not even agree with the original celestial jesus yeah, teaching. i know no absolutely and yeah, it's funny because uh, one of my girlfriends is ex-jehovah's witness and and she always like laughably points out that they had the true religion um, and, uh, and she was right actually, because <laughs> Jehovah's witnesses are actually more right about things than most Christian sects. Right. So for instance, they're Unitarian, they're not uh, Trinitarians because the Trinity was invented later. And that's, that's historically established. It doesn't exist in Paul, no Trinity. Right. Um, so the Jehovah's witnesses are right about that. Right. And, and so there's other things that they do that are actually like closer to Paul's Christianity. The only thing that they're wrong about is that Paul's Christianity is Late. Already heretical. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Fredrickson yeah. said that. She said, hey, everybody, you know how Paul acts like the end is going to happen soon and everything's going to wrap up? She, he's late. And I'm like, damn. I mean, if you yeah, think yeah, about yeah. it, he's late in the game. So what was before? Is just... Yeah, what was before was a Jewish sect. And it right. was very, you had to convert to Judaism to get in on this. Mm -hmm. So it was more like, you know, there's certain like uh, fringe Orthodox sects of Jews today. Uh, it was more like that. It was like some sort of like, you still had to be Jewish to be in that sect, but they still preach that all the other Jews are like wrong and they're going to be damned or whatever. And we're the ones who have the true salvation and so on. That's what the original Christianity was. It was a sect of Judaism for Jews. And even insofar as they've evangelized Gentiles, they were doing it the same way all Jews were, which is convert to Judaism or right. else you don't get resurrected. That's just how it is, right? Um, so the, yeah, the original sect was a Jewish sect. And so if you're not, circumcising and and following all the torah laws dietary and everything you are not a true original christian uh, so <laughs> that's why protestants have to genuinely believe that jesus really did appear to paul and really did change his mind and mm -hmm. say like oh by the way you can let gentiles in without converting i forgot <laughs> to mention that when i was alive but here you go <laughs> oh. they have to actually believe that that's real right so Thank you so much to that wonderful question. I hope you enjoyed the answer. Thank you for supporting us on Myth Visions Patreon as well. And uh, JD, enjoy your day. Everybody, go in the description. Help support us. Join the program. We'll get questions with academics answered as time goes by. Thank you.